So, I think they were basically kind of the predecessor to a lathe turn pot. I'm just going to open this up like a regular pot again. Not a lot of wedging, so sometimes you have to troubleshoot some of the inconsistencies because you, I mean, not a lot of centering and not a lot of wedging either. Um, so they're just ripe for disaster in general. <laughs> Whoops, that's pretty in front of y'all. Can you see? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to open that up and then start to pull the clay up. This has kinds of things And again, without overworking it too much, try to get the clay up to the thickness that you're looking for. These tankards were made in a 1740 period in Staffordshire. Um, I noticed that on the straight side of tankers, there's kind of a distinctive spiraling up of the active <coughs> clays, where some of the jug type shapes, which were probably thrown because complex shapes are harder to do with lay the technology, um, they have more of a horizontal structure. So that's again one of the diagnostic tools that kind of tells you something's going on there. When I first started making these, all my uh, patterning was horizontal. And I couldn't quite figure out what was happening with that. I need to get my the right rim here. So it still looks pretty muddy on the outside. And you can see that all of those little rings from my fingers running up to the side of the pot. Have to be smoothed out. So there's an agate pot, but it doesn't look like a whole lot. So normally that piece would be finished on the wheel like this, but then it would be set up rather hard. It would definitely at that point be put on a lathe. Whether it was thrown on a lathe is still out for conjecture. That's my uh, feeling that something like that was going on. But it would definitely have been trimmed on a lathe. So it would be put horizontal and trimmed, uh, not unlike a wood turner's uh, trimming, to, to get that clean surface uh, to reveal the decoration. I'm just going to take this. And the other reason that I felt like these pieces must have been made with an interior blade and an exterior form is because the interiors of the pieces are the agate is revealed. So so you're holding that rib at a really perpendicular angle to sort of scrape away the clay. Scraping away the inside, which is really a not an easy thing to do. I don't think that they went back and did that. I think that it was part of the process that revealed the inside and the outside at the same time. It's usually a more elegant solution than um, the contrived way that I would have to get at it to, to understand that something else was going on that you know, with that method of production. <coughs> and again, these potteries have long traditions. There's also a huge um, network of craftsmen. So you have silversmiths and wood carvers and wood turners and all kinds of inter interchange between uh, the different types of technology that were going on. And also everybody was ripping everybody else off. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and genres of, you know, uh, 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 fashion were incredibly important. And so one thing that came into fashion and everybody else was scrambling to kind of take that on and, you know, capitalize on it. So 
it wasn't just like, oh, look what a pretty pot I made. You know, it had a lot of other things going on. But at the same time, I think it's a big mistake to eliminate the craftsmen and the craftsmanship from the, the artworks that they were creating that we consider artworks today.